From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. And we're taking your calls here. Of course, this is the day that we've learned that a second person in Dallas has come down with Ebola. The first person in the United States to contract it in the United States. The second person to contract it outside of Africa. In both cases, they were nurses. Uh, in this particular case, they are very adamant that they followed all the procedures. They don't understand what's going on. But, of course, the CDC says you must not have followed our protocols. Well, you know what? People who are following their protocols are still coming down with the diseases in Africa. They don't have it under control there. So the question is, do they really have a full protocol? And the first protocol is you don't bring people into the country who have it. You don't allow that kind of travel into the country that we've seen. Of course, they are not going to do anything to control travel, to even screen people who have been traveling, because of course, that would be politically incorrect. We need to keep our borders open. And this is the result of keeping our borders open. It opens us to terrorism, to disease, to financial ruin, because Obamacare, unlike what the lady from the Council on Foreign Relations told us, Obamacare is not going to solve Ebola. The two of those combined will destroy this country financially as well as by the millions of people dying if it gets out. But let's go to some of your calls now. Uh, let's go to uh, Darren in Texas. Darren, go ahead. Hey, David. Hey. Hey, what do you want to say? You. Listen, I've got a couple of points here. First of all, I work in a hospital in North Texas, and, um, you know, it's the, the equipment they're using is just protective equipment. It's a front gown with a face shield and a mask. It is not a hazmat suit. Yes. So we've got to be careful and distinguish between those two. Also, mm -hmm. I want to know how much, you know, what's the percentage of uh, healthcare workers that are from Africa? I know I work with the number of them, probably 60 or 70 percent, and they travel back and forth. And um, I just wonder if there's something with that. As far well, that's as very concerning, forth. isn't it? Because the uh, lady who called in the uh, ambulance for Mr. Duncan on that Sunday, the second time, he was reluctant to go back because he had just been sent away when he had gone previously. Uh, she worked in the healthcare industry, and when the ambulance workers got there, she told them, put on masks and gloves, he's from Liberia, there are viruses. She didn't mention Ebola, but she was concerned for them. And, you know, she was given the all clear by the CDC only one week later to go back to work. She was caring for him as he was sick. I mean, she was somebody that they should be keeping isolated in quarantine, yet they gave her the all clear to go back to work. Yet to her, uh, we're grateful that to her credit, she did not do that. She isolated herself. I don't know if she has is still doing that or not, but of course... Giving her the all clear after just seven days, it takes from their literature eight to ten days for it to manifest symptoms up to 21 days. But after seven days, they told her to go back. So, again, we see this inconsistency with the CDC in terms of what they're telling people, and what they're actually doing. That's very, very troubling. Do you find that troubling? I, I really do. I, you know, I find all of this troubling, yeah. to be honest. I mean, that they're just totally disregarding all the protocols that we've followed for years now. And uh, to bring them in, I mean, there, there's only so many level four beds in the, in the U.S. I think and, it's 19, yes. Yeah, and it, it's just crazy to be dealing with these. I mean, it is so easy to make a mistake. I mean, when AIDS, would, AIDS was a big problem, needle sticks, I mean, that's a lot harder to stick yourself than to rub your nose after you take yes. off this protective equipment. You know? And as I mentioned before, the, the Nancy Reitball, who came back with Dr. Kent Brantley, uh, the first two that were brought into the country, she said she had no idea how she had contracted it. She said she was very careful. She was not even in the hot zone. They would decontaminate the doctors when they were coming out. The only thing that she could guess was that she had touched something that a fellow worker uh, who came down with Ebola had touched and that it had transferred that way. She was certain that she had not had any direct contact with them, had not touched him. That's what we're told is the only thing that we need to be concerned about. Yet, she knows that she did not do that. We're going to be right back, and I'm going to talk about some amazing hypocrisy at the center of these miracle drugs that are coming out, and also some suspicious timing in terms of the finances involved. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my super male vitality. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your super male vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Tell folks how you got introduced to Super Male, and then when Super Female came out, tell us what happened. After I saw such a huge positive change in my husband, I had to try it for myself. Talk about the effects. I feel great when I wake up in the morning. I have drive to go to the gym. I feel like I look better. I feel better. I feel sexier. I love it. Even if you don't believe in supplements, take the challenge. Get a bottle of Super Male, a bottle of Super Female. Check it out for yourself. Consult your physician. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. This is life-changing. KLN Los Angeles Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. Clone. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking about the new developments in Ebola. Of course, a another person in Dallas coming down with it, a nurse, uh, the first person to contract it in the United States. The second time a Westerner has contracted it from treating someone who's been brought back uh, out of Africa. I wanted to look, however, at what we're seeing being sold to us. Look at these headlines, for example. On the one hand, we've got these headlines about ZMAP as a miracle drug. Trial Ebola drug ZMAP, 100% effective in treating monkeys. Then biotechs are working to speed Ebola treatment. Then another one, GMO tobacco mystery serum rescues Ebola virus victims. Wow, sounds like everything is fine. The only problem is, is that... They just need some time to ramp up production and sell a lot of these to us. But then on the other hand, there's another treatment that's out there that you may not have heard them talking about very much. And that is blood transfusions, or as they call it, convalescent serum. And of course, it's from patients who are convalescing, and they take their blood plasma, their serum. They make sure that it doesn't have any Ebola in it, but it does have antibodies because they successfully fought off the disease and they do a transference, a transfusion into the other patients. Listen, however, to the way they describe that. This headline from the Daily News, uh, World Health Organization says blood from Ebola survivors found on the black market. Margaret Chan, director of the WHO, says patients who buy serum illegally run the risk of contracting HIV or going into anaphylactic shock and dying. Well, of course, that would be because you didn't match the blood type. That's a very easy test to do for ten dollars. You can get a kit retail, single quantity, to test the blood type and make sure you don't get the wrong type of blood. But, of course, they want to put that out there. HIV, hepatitis, you can test for those at $100 combined cost for the two kits, single quantity retail. That's something that could easily be addressed, but they want to scare you about it. Here's another one. Black market blood. Desperate Ebola patients turn to illicit means for potential serum. Risk of AIDS and other blood-borne diseases skyrocket. Another one. Black market sale of Ebola blood survivors raises concerns. So I guess we should be very concerned about that. The only problem is, is that the people who have come down with it, the people who have been in country, value that 
very highly. They value the convalescent serum, the blood transfusions, very highly. As a matter of fact, one of the things that Eric Duncan's uh, or Thomas Eric Duncan's family is complaining about is that he didn't receive a blood transfusion. They say that the family is outraged as he was refused a blood transfusion. Well, he wasn't so much refused one as they didn't have one of the correct type. We've seen blood transfusions given over and over again by Westerners, by doctors who come back into this country, health care providers, nurses who survived and they want to help other people, the first thing they want to do is give them a blood transfusion from their blood. We see this report from Business Insider, why the NBC cameraman who contracted Ebola will receive the blood of an Ebola survivor. Of course, that's Dr. Kent Brantley. He's going to donate blood to this cameraman, Ashoka Mukpo, who was uh, filming for NBC and country came down with uh, with Ebola, he's going to get a blood transfusion from Dr. Kent Brantley, and he's not the first one. We also had another doctor who came back, and he was treated with TMK Ebola, an experimental drug. That's all you'll hear them talk about. But he also received several blood transfusions from Dr. Kent Brantley. He was very keen to give it to him as well. And, of course, Dr. Kent Brantley himself, a survivor, was treated with a blood transfusion from someone that he treated that was very grateful to him. They said uh, he wanted to pay it forward. He wanted to repay him for the treatment that he had gotten. So he was he sent a uh, blood donation to Dr. Kent Brantley. We don't see that being reported in the media. What we see them reporting is that ZMAP is a miracle drug that people are recovering from. In actuality... The people that we've been hearing about who've been coming back, most of them have received a blood transfusion and some experimental drug like TMK or Brensidofavir, which is what uh, the cameraman is going to be getting as well. They're getting these experimental drugs, but nobody is talking about the blood transfusion. Now, what's really interesting about this to me is the hypocrisy at the center of this, because if you look at the mechanism for ZMAP, it actually uses the same mechanism as a blood transfusion. The idea of both of these is that as somebody is fighting this, you give them reinforcements or you give them an early injection of antibodies directly into their body. You don't wait for their body, their body's immune system to respond and build its own antibodies. You give them reinforcements, essentially. And that's the idea behind the blood transfusions. It's not a new idea. It's something that's been around for quite a while, but it's something that they're not talking about. Actually, it goes back all the way to 2003. In 2003, it was reported by the Telegraph that a doctor in Hong Kong was treating patients with who were suffering from SARS, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome. You remember that was a massive epidemic in China. He was doing the same kind of convalescent serum. He claimed that he had a success rate of more than 60% for the experimental treatment. Okay. He also said that although not all those treated with the serum had recovered, none had died so far. He said they just take longer to recover or they're still in the hospital. Now, there was also a study about Ebola back in 1996. We've had several outbreaks of Ebola over the years. In most of the previous outbreaks, it was really just tens of people who got it. The worst ones, other than that, were there was a couple where they had uh, about 300 people that came down with Ebola, one where there was 425. We've never seen anything where there are thousands of people who have contracted it, thousands of people who have died. This is so much beyond anything that we've previously seen. But during this 1996 outbreak, where there was 312 people who came down with Ebola, 80% of them died. But they did a study. They actually looked at this with eight people, which I find is kind of interesting because as we've looked at these Westerners who've been given ZMAP, the miracle drug, that's also about seven people. So it's about the same size population. Now, what they found with this study that they did back in 1996, they were very careful to screen the blood to make sure that it didn't have any other diseases, that it didn't have any Ebola in it. And they found in these patients who ranged from ages 12 to 54 with an average of 33 years, they found that they had seven out of the eight patients recover. This was in an outbreak where they had an 80% casualty rate. So seven out of eight patients recovered. Now, in these patients, it was a very carefully controlled environment. They were given very good palliative care. And that's something we haven't really talked about a lot. When you come down with Ebola, you are 
losing a lot of fluids, you're vomiting violently, massive diarrhea. People are losing the bodily fluids, so you have to keep them hydrated. You have to keep their electrolytes in balance, and that means that they have to carefully monitor their electrolytes. But in this control situation where they knew that they were getting good blood, they had seven out of eight patients survive. The eighth patient actually had broken her fever, then had an epileptic seizure, fell out of the bed. They found her on the floor with a massive bruise on her.